Mmm. Tastes like apostasy. Hey, what's up? It's your boy, Jay the Comedian. How y'all doing today? Yes, I have merch. Today, I want to talk to you guys about what exactly happens that makes somebody become an ex-Jehovah Witness. Oh, the brainwashing is strong in that group. It's not always the exact same thing that causes people to leave the organization. Usually. It's more of a marathon of events that happen. Steps, if you will. And here's the video on the steps that usually cause people to leave the organization. Let go! All right, let's start at step one. At step one, you're a Jehovah's Witness. You're usually just a young little kid trying to live your best little JW life, watch your Sophia and them videos, willing to break open your piggy bank to get a governor body money. You know, Tony need his liquor, so. Make it rain, children. <laughs> and yeah, you're just a happy kid living your best JW life. But after years of being a JW, eventually, for every JW, step two happens. So what exactly is step two? Well, step two is when you're a Jehovah's Witness and you're living your best life. You're a little bit older. You've seen a little bit more. You've been through a bunch of different life experiences. And after going through all these things and seeing all these things, eventually, every Jehovah Witness does this. You get a question. Maybe not even just one question. Maybe it's several questions, but there are things about the organization that kind of don't sit right with you. It's not big enough to make you want to leave, but it's definitely something that makes you think and question the organization. Now, most Jehovah Witnesses know you are not to question the organization. No, that's a no-no. You better not Don't you question us. But it's definitely something that every Jehovah Witness have go through their mind at least once. Some even ask the questions, and they'll even get an answer, but they know in the back of their head that answer doesn't sound right and doesn't feel right and doesn't... I'll accept it, but it just doesn't feel like the right answer. And that usually would bring us to step number three. Now, step number three is something that all of us XJWs are familiar with. If you're an XJW and you have a YouTube channel, oh, you run into step number three people all the time. Now, in step three, it usually starts off nice and innocent. You're just living your best JW life, and then all of a sudden, you find yourself on the internet, maybe even looking at a YouTube video. And then one of those dirty apostates posts something, and you feel an unfair urge to fight back and defend Jehovah's organization. <laughs> oh, I know y'all see them lying evil apostates. How dare you talk about the only true God? <laughs> and yes, they are irritating, but you gotta let them go through their journey. I personally don't block or delete the stage three people off my YouTube channel because I know where they're at on their journey. Now, the step number three people are Jehovah Witnesses who have a question about the religion and who looks at XJW videos online. Stage three people are ex especially harmed on by the governing body. They know exactly how dangerous stage three is. So they do everything that they can to avoid stage four. Because while they're at stage three, they let them know. You do not look at XJW videos. You do not talk to apostates. You do not listen to apostate material. And all this is done to avoid stage four. So stage four happens when you're just sitting there and you're defending Jehovah, right? You're online going hard defending Jehovah and his organization. It's the true religion. How dare those dirty apostates say bad things about this? Holy and true religion. <laughs> and one day, while you're sitting there and you're defending Jehovah out of the blue, your question gets answered. Oh, oh no, no, this is, no, this can't happen. This, no, there's no way this is the right answer. Then you look at it and you research it and you step back and you can't believe it. You actually got the answer you've been looking for from an apostate video. No, this cannot be true. I refuse to believe it. And a lot of people do. Some people go back to stage two or they go back to stage three and try to avoid the whole thing. But they always have in their mind that stage four, you got a correct answer from an XJW. <laughs> You've had a question answered and that's stage four. And usually, after stage four happens, stage five is inevitable. Stage five. So now you're a Jehovah Witness who had a question, who watched XJW videos. And got the correct answer from the XJW. So now at stage five, you know that there's a possibility that the XJWs are telling you something that's not a lie. Which is something that you've been told by the governing body your entire life. XJWs are incapable of telling you the truth. You can't learn anything from XJW. They're liars. They're mentally diseased. But you know you've already learned something from them. You've already had a question there. So at stage five, now you're sitting there knowing that, hmm, I could quite possibly get correct answers from XJW. Oh, this is not a good place to be. If you're a faithful Jehovah Witness, you shouldn't be going to XJWs for any answers. But once you get one question answered, now you got another question 
get that one answered. Then you got another question, and you get that one answered. So at stage five, you learn. XAWs are reliable source for truth. Then stage number six happens. So now at stage number six, you're starting to realize a couple things. Now, usually each stage, it could take years to happen. It could take hours to happen. It's not really a set time limit on how things occur, but from stage one to stage six, it could take years for you to actually realize. You can't just break that type of brainwashing overnight. But once you get to stage six and you realize that the ex-Jehovah Witnesses can provide you correct answers, then you realize that the Jehovah Witnesses have not been giving you the correct answers. At least about that subject right now. So at stage six, you start to really question whether or not you can even believe the stuff you're hearing from the Jehovah Witnesses. Then you get to stage seven. You're sitting at the Kingdom Hall. You've been watching XJW videos all weekend. You've had a bunch of question and answers. You're starting to look and listen a little differently than you used to. You probably didn't miss several meetings already. But now at stage seven, you're sitting at the Kingdom Hall. You're hearing a talk. And you hear them lie. You hear them give a straight up lie. You know it's not true. Or you know that they're taking the truth and they're spinning it in a way it's not meant to be spent. And they're trying to send something in the direction that you know is not the right direction. So at stage seven, you learn not only can you trust the XJWs and get good information from them. At stage seven, you learn you probably shouldn't really trust what the Jehovah Witnesses are telling you. You can literally measure and see the lie as they come out in real time. Because if you've been watching XJW videos, by this point, you're pretty educated in what goes on. You can pretty much predict what is and what is not true. And that brings us to stage number eight. You leave the Jehovah Witness organization altogether. You're done. Now, stage eight is one of the most dangerous stages because you're going to have to fight your own instinct to go and tell everybody that you know all the stuff you've learned. Well, first you need to realize that it took you probably years to learn. And not only did it take you years to learn it, it took you even more time to finally accept it as truth. So you can't just go out and just grab the first person you see. Hey, hey, I got some information for you. Did you know in 1914 they lied and the pyramid is where Rutherford body is and there's aliens in the sky and duckies that come out the ground and hunt people? You're gonna go way too far. You have to feed... <laughs> You have to feed the truth to people slowly. That's the way you got it. So you can't expect people to get it that quick. And when you're heading out, you get an overwhelming urge to want to save all the people that you know and love. But you can't do it. It will work in the opposite way. Because I don't care how much a Jehovah Witness love you. I don't care how close you are family ties wise. If they hear something negative about their organization, they will shut you off and shut you down. They won't even listen to the conversation. Trust me. I have several brothers and sisters who still inside of it. And if you utter one word that goes negatively against the governing body, they shut you down. So that should bring you to stage nine. By this point, at stage nine, you're an ex Jehovah Witness. You know you're not going back. You can tell any and everybody exactly what's wrong with the organization and what caused you to but leave. But the problem is, is that you still really don't have a voice. Because like me, if you have family inside the organization, they'll use that to keep you silent. You can still hang around. You can still come to family functions. You're great. Sometimes. Some people people, they don't even go that far. But usually you're still good. But if we catch you talking negatively about Jehovah's organization, we're cutting you off. And that's what a lot of people try to avoid. And that's what will keep a lot of people silent and voiceless about letting other people know about the atrocities that happen inside the Jehovah Witness organization. That kept me quiet for a really long time. Until one day, Step 10 happened. Step 10, basically, for me, was when somebody was in literal danger inside the organization. Somebody who I love was physically in danger inside the organization. And I could not keep quiet anymore. I called them, I told them everything that I knew. And of course, I knew what would happen and how they would react. And they reacted that way. <laughs> like it happened exactly how I said it was going to happen. But it taught me a lesson. It taught me that my voice needs to be heard regardless of the consequences. If you're trying to be quiet and just save yourself, that's fine. If you're trying to hold relationships together, that's great. But eventually, you can't let them keep you silent. If you have something to say, put it out there. Let the world know. Every war on this planet that has ever been won happened because of brave people. Don't let them silence you. All right, man, it's your boy, Jay the Comedian. I hope y'all loved the video. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. If you're not subscribed already. And yeah, I got merch. Since I faded. It, that's how I love. That's how you should leave. But if you did fade out the organization, I got the shirt for you. I hope y'all have a great day. Holla at Chihuahua. Deuces. How dare you talk about my guy?
not today.